What's up guys? In today's video I will be showing you how to record guitar and bass. The reason why I'm doing this is because it is the most requested video that I've had this year to make. I've been asking people, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? And they've been saying, I want to learn how to record guitar. So I thought I'd cover both guitar and bass in the same video. So this is it. So the first thing that I highly recommend you do is to get brand new strings on your guitar. Make sure that your guitar is set up properly. And from there, let's talk about the cable that you need. So the cable that you need will be like either a guitar cable or something like this, which is a jack to XLR cable. You can use both, a guitar cable and one of these cables. The reason why I'm using this kind of cable is because I have it at my disposal. So that's what I'm gonna use. So let's plug it in. So as you can see here, you could input either jack or XLR here. So all I do is I put the XLR cable in and then plug this into the guitar. So what I recommend you do is you turn it up to minus three or minus six dB and you'll see a green light on the audio interface. When it comes red, that means it's way too high, way too hot. The signal is way too loud. So what you want to do is you want to turn it down a little bit. So no matter how loud you get, it'll always be green. Amazing. So from there, you get your level. You want to record guitar minus three, minus six dB. So once you have your level, we'll go into the DAW and set up your preferences. All right, now we're in the DAW, we're in Ableton Live. We click on the preferences and make sure that our audio interface is selected. So I have a Claret 2 Pre, so that's what I use. And basically, you go on your audio track and then what you can do is select your channels. So I'm coming from channel two. So I select channel two and then I select in so I can listen back. And then I press record that red button to be able to record. So from there, what I highly recommend you do is to use amp simulation. So let's find an amp simulator. For me, I use Guitar Rig 5. And then you find a preset that you like. I, I like this one. What's good about Guitar Rig is that it has a tuner inbuilt, so I'm going to quickly tune the guitar. Very good. So after that point, what I want to do is find a drum groove to be able to write to, to be able to compose to, or just to riff to. So let's find a drum beat. Um, I'm going to use a Travis Barker beat because everyone loves Travis Barker, right? Sick beat. So what I do is I usually loop that four times. I put it on a loop and then all I have to do from there is click the record button and record. And that's it. That's how you record the guitar first part. So what I normally do is I will record the guitar twice to pan left and right, especially the chord progressions or the riffs to have that widespread because when two things are playing slightly differently, you get like a wide sound. So that's what I'm going to do. So what I do is I duplicate the track. 
and then record on this part on top of the original riff. That's it, that's all I have to do. And then from there, I'm gonna pan left and right on the tracks. So now it sounds really wide because I've got two tracks doing the same thing but playing slightly differently. And then from there, what I usually do is I will create another audio track. I will copy and paste the tone, the simulation on there and then I will up the delays and the reverb and that will allow me to do a sort of like a melody or a lead. So I'm going to quickly record that. So now I've got a bass here, so what I'm going to do is record a bass part and the first thing that I highly recommend is just doing the same thing, so find a bass preset that you really like. That tone sounds fantastic, let's use that. The next thing that I highly recommend to do is tune. Alright, let's go. From there, what I highly recommend you do with the guitar is to scoop out some of that lower end. So what I recommend you do is to create a group for that guitar track. Get an EQ and then just take out about 100 hertz or something like that so you can let the bass come through. I'll obviously turn down all these tracks as I go. The next thing that I do is I close my eyes and have a listen to the music and find a balance. So what you want to do is to listen to it and figure out, okay, where's the bass sit, where's the guitar sit, where the drums sit. So what I generally do is I take out elements and then I put it back in to see how it sits in the mix. In today's video, not only did you learn how to record guitar and bass, but you also learned how to write a darkness song. So thank you very much for watching. 
Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys soon.